In typical Jeremy. <laughs> Stop doing it. <laughs> she made me nervous. That's you. She put me in and gave me breakfast. I've even got an Aussie flag on the back of my shirt. Can you see? You land down under. <laughs> oh, I've got my flag too. Women glow and men plunder. So. Tonight's topic? I feel like it's Australia Day, but it's been and gone. So, yeah. okay, hold on. Let's, I'll do a classy fade out. Slow fade out. I love that bit. Hey, welcome. It is. Can Hello, matey. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. G'day. Yeah, g'day. Yeah, g'day. G'day, mate. Hey, Cobber. Tonight's Monday night, and that must mean that it's Kim's top five. All right. We're, we're coming to you from beyond the black stump, just Feels north like of days. where the, the dog sits on the tucker box. Well, sort of a bit north and a bit east. Anyway, uh, it is Kim's top five tonight. Glad you could be with us. And tonight it is... Doo -doo -doo. Kim's top five Australian oils. Yep. So did you know that Young Living has been in Australia for 20 years this year? And that's another thing that's celebrating. They even said that kind of on my shirt. Yep. But <laughs> Where is it? It says Young Living, celebrating 20 years. Wow. But this okay. was actually when so. they did the uh, 20, far, like the 20 years in America. Oh, but okay. I yeah. just figured I could recycle the shirt. Absolutely. It's a lovely <laughs> shirt and I just copped an eyeful, so that was even better. So. <laughs> Speaking of shirts, crikey, look at this little fella. What do you think of that? Does, does this make me look like I've got boobs? I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway, if it does, well, that's not good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so it is uh, tonight Kim's Top 5 for Australian oils. Oils, yes. So specifically oils. And it's exciting. Single oils. Well, I'm talking about single, single oils. Unmarried oils. So Yeah. Some are dating, but they're not married yet. So there you go. So get us started off. What have you got for us? Okay, number five. Five, yep. Is Melaleuca alternifolia. Yep. Right. I love it. Melaleuca alternifolia. Not Melaleuca quinervia. No, but Ooh, Melaleuca bad. alternifolia. Yep. Which is um, tea tree. Tea tree. So many of us in Australia know tea tree. Crikey. We've used it. We've grown up with it. Um, yep. It's certainly quite popular here in Australia. So Melaleuca alternifolia. I actually read today that... Um, Melaleuca is broken into two words, um, which actually the means black and white because Mel. the stumps are white, like the yep. trunks, and then the darker colours of the leaves, so black and white. And the alternifolia means that the leaves come out at alternate places on the branches. So like you'll have one nodule coming out and then the next one up, like, and they go like that, like, so they don't go like that. Okay. So that's how the name Melaleuca alternifolia. Alternifolia. So look go. out for that next time you're looking at a tea tree. Yeah. Okay. So tell us what, what more can you tell us about Melaleuca? Why is it one of your favourite? So I guess. Aussie oils? Um, I want to tell you a little bit of a story about, you know, because I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land who have bought us pretty well all of the essential oils that we <laughs> yeah. have here in Australia. The reason we know about them is because of our Aboriginal history um, yeah. and the people who use them as traditional medicine. And so obviously I pay my respects to Aboriginal people all across Australia, wherever you're watching this. Um, mm -hmm. But locally where we live, we acknowledge the Gambangi people. And just up the road um, is the Bundjalung people. And the, the story that I want to tell you next is actually um, a Bundjalung story about tea tree. So there was a legendary, I'm gonna to have to read some of this just so that I don't get it wrong because I would hate to be disrespectful in any way, shape yeah. or form, but there was a legendary princess, Elamani, I think, would you say that is Elamani? I'd say Elamani. Elamani, yeah. of the Bundjalung people. And basically, she was a beautiful princess and that she had to leave her true love and travel through the bushland of coastal New South Wales. Um, the journey was really long and, she, and unknown to her. She'd never been along those paths before. And she was worried that she wouldn't be able to find her way back to her loved one or to her family. So she spoke to, um, you know, the gods and they actually rewarded her with some special seeds. And these seeds she scattered along the way and those seeds grew into the beautiful forest that we know as the tea tree plantation. So you'll have seen tea tree growing all up the east coast, especially around Byron Bay. Mm. We're off to Bluesfest this Easter long weekend. Tea tree and it's farm. a tea tree farm, yeah. yeah. 
Um, and so basically the trunks are white and so when she was to find her way back at night, the trunks glowed in the moonlight. Yeah. And so... Have you ever walked through a tea tree forest in, at night? No. It's, it's ghostly. Ghostly? And it's, yeah, and it's exactly like that. It's all these white trunks everywhere. It's, it's quite cool. And of course they grow very close together. So it's shady and quite dark under there. You don't get much moonlight, but you just have these white trunks. Yeah, so that's, cool. that's kind of how we come to know um, about mm. these plants. And that they protected her. And like through generations of bundjalung people, they also protected, um, you know, the bundjalung people. And they were used as, you know, traditional plant medicine and things like that. Mm. So, um, however, the reason that we call it tea tree um, is because it's alleged that it was named by um, Sir Joseph Banks, the botanist that was with uh, Captain, Captain Cook. Cook. Yeah. And that Captain Cook's men saw the local Bundjalung people cooking up the leaves and making a tonic. And so they they did the same thing. They cooked it up and they called it tea tree because they were cooking up the leaves of the tree and turning it into tea. And it would have been great for them. Yeah. yeah, so um, that's basically how it got its name. And then they even tried brewing it to turn it into a beer. <laughs> <laughs> tea tree beer. Yeah, tea tree beer. Strike so um, and the other thing that many people may not, may not know is, I mean, we know it because it's in a lot of Australian homes and we use it, you know, like it's in most bathroom cabinets in Australian mm -hmm. homes because you use it, you know, as a first aid. Um but it was actually in all Australian soldiers' war kits yep. during World War Two. Yep, and well, it started in World War One. That was where they had it. Was the first one, and they it worked so well that they reran it in World War Two. Yeah, there's a bit of historical fact for you. So, yeah. so that's my number five is good old awesome. tea tree. Yep. So tea tree, as I say, is um, growing uh, in southern Queensland and northern New South Wales. The um, and I'll, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name of the farm, <laughs> the, um, the company. But basically they have um, farms near Casino in New South Wales. Mm. And they even have plantations around Coffs Harbour, Port Macquarie. So it's really actually quite close to us. Yeah. So Locally I love sourced. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. So that's tea tree. So that's my number five. Number four. Number four, yep. So number four is relatively new to Young Living, but definitely not new to... Um, once again, Australian indigenous, indigenous people. people. Yeah. It's been used for you know hundreds and thousands of years here in Australia, and it's kunzia. So you pronounce it kunzia. So do you want to hold kunzia? Yep. So we were, we were so excited when this was released. Well, yeah, and um, it's actually a native shrub that grows wild on F Flinders Island mm -hmm. and the northeastern top of Tasmania. Um, I love it. The it's. It's basically called, like, referred to as white cloud because of the little white flowers that grow on the shrub. It's the shrub mm. that grows. Um, the ab local Aboriginal people of Tasmania used it for many, many different purposes. Um, but it wasn't turned into an oil. Like, it was just used as the plant by the local people. Um, and it was first turned into an oil um, by basically a farmer. So... When white settlers moved to Tasmania and to the northern tops, they actually saw native animals laying underneath the wild kunzia bushes um, and it helped them to sort of remain um, not attacked by <laughs> little flying <laughs> things. <laughs> Um, anyway, hopefully you get the point. Let's but... just say that when the indigenous people used this, there were no flies on them. No, but that's picking right. that up, that was a good yeah, idea, slang. wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so basically this Tasmanian farmer found that um, where the bushes grew along his um, fences... This is such like a cool story. It was barbed story. wire yep. fences, right? And so, I don't know whether you've ever seen barbed wire fences, but we've got barbed wire fences yep. around us because there's cattle farms and stuff. After a while, it all goes rusty. And what he found was wherever the kunzia plant mm. grew next to, because it's wild, um, grew next to his fences, the, the wire didn't rust. And so it basically was stopping the wire from oxidising. Mm. Um, so he decided that he was going to try and distill this oil from the leaves and the branches of the tree. He used it on his members of his own family and his extended family. Um... Yeah, and he found amazing results. So Yep, none of them got red hair, so that's hilarious. So anyway, Quinzia essential oil is actually um, as I said, farmed on Flinders Island. Mm. 
Flinders Island actually can grow a lot of it because of the strong winds and the kind of temperature that it's got and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and basically it's like Young Living has three different kinds of farms. They have their own owned farms, which is like the farm in um, Mona in Utah and Idaho. Highland Flats. Highland Flats. Um, the Lavender Farm in France, that kind of, they, they own by Young Living. The second type of farm is what they call a partner farm, which I'm going to talk about two partner farms today um, that we've got here in Australia. But the third kind of farm that Young Living has is a certified seed to seal supplier. So where Young Living gets their tea tree from is a certified um, seed to seal supplier farm and same with the Quinzia, the farm in Tasmania. So basically it means that they have to meet the strict seed to seal standards that Young Living put on all of their farms. Yeah. It's just that they're an independently owned um, farm. So <laughs> if you ask the question, what's the difference between Young Living farms, partner farms and certified farms in terms of how they produce stuff? The answer is nothing, isn't it? No, like, nothing. There is no There's difference. all the same yeah. quality. They have to undergo yep. the same rigorous standards. Same chemical-free soil. Yeah, or everything. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Quinzia oil actually contains 1,8-cineol, or what we commonly refer to as eucalyptol, which is what gives eucalyptus oil and even rosemary oil and Quinzia oil yeah. that really strong eucalyptol-type um, smell. So, it's a great alternative to actually using eucalyptus. Does. And it does smell like eucalyptus, but there's more to it. It's it's a bit, I don't know, it's more subtle. There's other things happening. If you've mm. got a teenager in your home and they're looking for something to put on their sort of like angry skin on their face, then Quinzia is a great alternative. Mm. Or yep. you could use the tea tree that I talked about as my number five oil. Um, good to massage tired muscles, add it yeah. to some V6 oil. And best of all, if you are a Young Living member and you do a 320 PV order this month, you will get this oil, along with yeah. some others, for free. Yeah. So, yeah, couldn't see You can also diffuse it too. Yeah, you can. So, same oh, with Mel Luca And we, well. we yeah. actually, I've started making my great outdoors spray by adding the citronella, the mm. tea tree, the lemongrass, yeah. and the Kunzia. I think yeah. the Kunzia is great in my great outdoors spray. Yeah, so. yeah. No, tick that box. All right, so that's or number four. No tick. Number three. Well, yep, yeah, sorry. All Got right. distracted there. Does anyone want to hazard a guess at what this piece of wood is? Has anyone seen this before? Pick me. Pick, Pick you? Me. Jeremy goes, can I smell it? Like he said, what does it smell like? I said, it smells, it smells like, like wood. wood. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would, yeah, anyway. Yeah. It smells like wood. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you want to have a guess what this piece of wood is, what do you think it is, Jeremy? Crikey, I reckon this little fella must be a bit of blue cypress. It is blue cypress. Yeah. So I want to tell you a bit about blue cypress because I have been lucky enough to mm. go to the blue cypress farm in Darwin and meet Vince. I've met Vince a couple of times at different conventions and symposiums and things like that. Um, he's your typical um, Aussie character. And he's the founder of the Outback Botanical Reserve, which he basically stumbled across... Um, uh, the distill like how to distill this oil a few years ago. So originally blue cypress was planted outside of Darwin so that they could make houses out of it, okay? And so the Northern Territory government planted acres and acres of blue cypress um, trees. But then Cyclone Tracy happened and Cyclone Tracy basically wiped out Darwin and after that the Northern Territory government decided that they would um, bring in a law that you couldn't build houses out of wood anymore because they just got flattened. So they had to be made out of steel. So then there were all these um, blue cypress trees left and nothing could happen to them. As Darwin began to grow and grow and, and it you know reached the outskirts where the blue cypress trees were, the they were gonna just demolish the blue cypress trees. And Vince and his business partner at the time decided that they would um, get a permit from the Northern Territory government to harvest and distill these oil, these, um, these trees for to turn into blue cypress oil. And the thing is that what they found was that if you distilled the tree with the bark on, because the actual blue constituent, the Tulanine. I can't. I can never say it. But what you can Google. It. Is it down there somewhere? Um, it's what um, blue blue tansy and German chamomile. They all have the same constituent same that make it go yeah. blue, and it's actually in the bark. So the bark often falls off the trees 
when like the trees get cut and they lay on the ground for a while and when that happens the bark often falls off the wood and then you don't get that beautiful blue color so you'll see that a lot of blue cypress on the market is clear yellow or even brown and it's not the beautiful blue color that our blue cypress is so vince has basically patented this whole process and produces our lovely blue cypress oil the thing about blue cypress oil is it you know, it's distilled in Darwin and it's as runny as, but you take it to cold places <laughs> like some parts of America and even Europe and you'll find that it's, it basically solidifies. It goes really thick. So if you're using your blue cypress oil in winter and it seems like there's nothing in the bottle and you can't trip it out, mm. warm it up, stick it in your bra like I do with my rose oil. Or in my bra. And you'll find that it, um, you'll get it out a lot is, better. Is that because it's full of sesquiterpenes? It is... Long chain molecules. Yeah, so it, it does yeah. have some sesquiterpenes in it. Yeah. It was actually blue cypress oil, the official fragrance of the 2000 Olympics in Sydney. Yeah. So every single athlete got a bottle of blue cypress oil to take away. Yeah. Um, and once again, we owe all the knowledge that we know about blue cypress oil from the um, indigenous people around, like the Tiwi mm. people from Melville and Bathurst Islands, just north of Darwin. They were the ones who used this beautiful native tree. And um, yeah, and best of all, you can get blue cypress oil for free this month if you're a Young Living member and you do a 190 PV order on Essential Rewards. It has to be on Essential Rewards and you can get this beautiful, actually I didn't even show you the oil. Yeah. Um, beautiful yeah. blue well, cypress nice oil. I showed you, yeah. So I'll show you the colour, if I can get it to drip out. I'll try and get it close enough. Mm, dripping fast or sometimes slow. Yes, probably thickened. I'll put it down my pants. I don't know if you can see, probably can't. Can you see that it's kind of blue? It's when I turn yeah, my hand, you can kind of see yeah. the blue in it. Um, anyway, I just did a bad thing by touching it against my skin, but just to make it go out fast. It's, okay. <laughs> it's my oil, yeah. my, my James. Yeah. All right, so that's Blue Cypress Oil. That's my number three. Yeah. And it's got a great story. Like Vince, when you hear him, you can, you can see the YouTube clips and he's a bit of a maverick just like Gary. And I think that I'm sure that's why they got on that's so what, well, yeah, isn't it? Attracted Gary he's too. a pioneer as well. It's very, very woody. Great for adding to oh, yeah. your skin it, routine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and before we used, like now we sell blue tansy and I add blue tansy, but before we had blue tansy, I actually used to add blue cypress to my shampoo to have my blonde shampoo. So, so it didn't go yellow. <laughs> Is that what we're talking <laughs> That's about? Much, Let's yeah. get down to the okay. nitty gritty. Yeah. All right, number two. I know this stuff. Lemon myrtle. Yeah, Do you yeah. have a smell of lemon myrtle? Yeah, yeah. So the botanical name for lemon myrtle is actually Backhauser, Backhausia citradora. So the citradora is the um, lemon citrus smell of it but it was actually named by the english botanist james mm. backhouse so that's why it's backhousia citriodora it's grown mostly in queensland well native to queensland and northern new south wales once again similar to tea tree it was originally called lemon scented myrtle but like everything in australia we shorten it, shorten it. like jezza now we just call it lemo Kimmer. Lemo. <laughs> lemo. Right. He wants some mate. lemo. Crack some lemo on that. Yeah. We'll be right. Yep. Um, it's actually in the myrtle family. Um, it's gorgeous diffused. I, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's, like, it's probably my favourite diffuser blend. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah. blend, single oil. But Sorry, you can add it oil. to like... Yeah, well, what did we have the other day? Uh, no, that was lemongrass and peppermint. But I have oh, done lemon it? myrtle okay. and peppermint too. Yeah. I love to add it to my natural homemade dishwasher powder mm. because the scent that it gives off in your dishwasher after you've washed your dishes is divine like yeah. i absolutely love it so i add it to my um to my dishwasher powder um it's so fresh and yummy but the best thing that i love to do with it is add it to my cooking it's actually one of our culinary oils so it's particularly good in milk baked dishes so i make lemon myrtle yogurt i add a like i get a tub of natural yogurt like we make our own yogurt, but you can just buy yogurt, like yeah. Greek yogurt or natural yeah. yogurt from the supermarket and add some honey and some lemon myrtle and stir it around. Like, um, 
depending on how much you add, like basically to probably 500 yeah, grams. Strong. Yeah, it's quite strong. So like two drops and a tablespoon of honey kind of thing. Mm. But do your own taste sensation. Start I've, with one. Yeah, I've made lemon myrtle and macadamia ice cream. Mm, that was very yummy. I've made lemon, for, lemon myrtle fettuccine where I've added it to the eggs before I've added the eggs to the flour and then I've rolled it out and run it through my pasta maker to make lemon myrtle fettuccine. And then I serve it with like a creamy sauce and you get that beautiful lemon myrtle taste. Um, I've made lemon myrtle scones. A lot of these recipes are online. Um, yeah, we actually haven't had dinner yet, so... No, and here I am talking <laughs> about food. But I, I add it to my scone dough with the butter. Um, you, whenever you use essential oils in cooking, you always try to add it to the fat in the recipe. Yeah. So whether it's the butter, cream. the milk, the cream, the eggs, the coconut oil, all of those kinds of things, mm. that's when you add it because it mixes it through. If you just add it to the dry ingredients, you'll find that you'll end up with a clump that's really highly flavored and other bits mm. that aren't flavored at all, okay? Um, so yeah, so lemon myrtle yogurt, lemon myrtle ice cream, lemon myrtle scones. Oh, lemon myrtle feta. I make feta and halloumi and I added it to my lemon to my feta and I made lemon myrtle feta. Um, the recipe's online for that one as well. Lemon myrtle chocolates, just add a drop of, um, of lemon myrtle cho I'm chocolates. Hungry. But the best dish of all is my lemon um, myrtle fudge. Yeah. So if you want the recipe for that, it's um, I posted on my blog yesterday, so go onto my blog, hotoilymama.com.au. Yeah, hotoilymama.com.au. Go up the top to hot topics, and it brings up all my blog posts, and you'll see lemon myrtle fudge. And I'm pretty sure that the lemon myrtle feta recipe is on there too. Yep, and there's also a link to cooking up a storm. No, uh, cooking with essential oils. Yeah, yep. so, so lemon you myrtle, book, you need it in your cooking collection, yeah. believe me, it is the best. Okay, so, let's let's keep right. moving. So that number was number one. that was number two. Yeah. Lemon myrtle. It is so versatile. Yeah, and it smells so good. Number one, <laughs> sacred sandalwood. Now I'm going to tell you oh, a little story. Yeah. All of those other essential oils are actually native to Australia. So mm. Kunzia was native to um, Tasmania. Blue yep. Cypress was native to um, the area around Darwin, north of Darwin. Um, the lemon myrtle and the tea tree are native to right, South right. Queensland and New South Wales. Yep. Um, sacred sandalwood is actually Indian sandalwood. It's sandalum album, which is the right. Indian sandalwood. Okay, It's not the Australian sandalwood, but... It's grown here in Australia. So the thing about sandalwood and Young Living stopped selling sandalwood for a while because they knew that it was becoming extinct. It, due to overpopulation in India where it's grown, like there's, you know, thousands, millions of people, but it was also over harvested. Um, how many, how many, they use it in insects, sti incense incense sticks. sticks. And they used a billion a, a day. A billion incense <laughs> sticks are used a day. That's so a you can imagine incense. how much sandalwood has been over harvested yeah. to turn them into that billion incense sticks. Yeah. So Young Living made a decision for a while not to, you know, because they're a very sustainable company and they didn't want to um, condone the practices that were happening. So they stopped sourcing their sandalwood from India. And first off, they sourced Hawaiian sandalwood. Um, which was a different species again, um, but then they were able to do a partnership arrangement with the um, Quintus Sandalwood Farm in Kununurra in Western Australia. So both the Blue Cypress Farm and the Quintus um, Farm in Western Australia are both partner farms. So partner farms are different again. So you have the certified seal, seed seal, which have to meet the standards, but partner farms is where Young Living invest money mm. into that farm Heavily to bring invest. their equipment up to date to you know whatever they need in order to meet the seed to seal standards and so that's what young living has done with the quintus farm in kananara and, and partner farms don't source they don't supply to anyone else no they? they're, they're, they're usually exclusive yeah. to young yeah. living so the difference between Indian sandalwood and Australian sandalwood, so obviously Australian sandalwood is native to Australia, but it grows in desert type areas. So it likes, you know, acidic, sandy soil. So a lot of the Australian sandalwood that you'll see on the sh um, shelves in Australia comes from the wheat belt area around um, Kalgoorlie, sort of like that mm -hmm. area east really of out. Perth. Um, whereas... India, the Indian sandalwood that's grown here in Australia is grown around Kununurra um, because it's a tropical plant. It really likes to grow in the tropics. It is what we call a hemi 
parasitic plant which basically means that it grows off the roots of other plants so what they do is they plant out native um, like native Australian plants like acacias and um, I was gonna say wattles but that's the same thing and Fiona will correct me but you know like I'll leave a native I hate having a hot for a friend and because, gum trees yeah. as well so but basically they, they plant out different kinds of yeah. native to bring in the wildlife and things like that but the other thing is that some of the plant native plants are fast growing and so they feed the sandalwood in the first few years of its life and then others are more slow growing so they continue to feed the sandalwood tree so they're basically the host tree well so they plant rows of the host trees and then they plant the rows of the sandalwood like they start sort of one to two years later planting the other rows and then they what happens is the sandalwood roots actually tap into the roots so they're kind of like a mesh and start feeding like get the nutrients and all of that kind wow. of stuff off the host trees and particularly the the first few you know the ones that feed for the first few years they either die off or um, the farmers actually prune them off um, to allow more of the other vegetation to come through and and feed the sandalwood trees wow. now the sandalwood trees are harvested about when they're about 15 years old and they go along and they harvest the sandalwood right at the ground because they want the because the oil is in the the trunk of the tree and uh, they basically harvest that they cut off the branches and they keep the wood and the heartwood and that's what they send down to the factory in albany to be distilled but they also get like a borer and they bore into the um the taproot well, yeah, basically the trunk that goes in the ground yeah. and they get that wood and they send that off as well because there's oil oh. in that too. So, that's, so a, that's a huge investment, 15 years. Yeah, 15 years so. before you can start and get some, um, yeah, some oil off oil. the tree. Wow. Um, the oil of Australian sandalwood and Indian sandalwood actually have different properties um, and even sort of different smells. So... Mm. Um, Basically, the, as I said, they ship it down to Mount Romance to the facility in Albany, which some of you I know I have been there as well. Um, and they have, you know, they've refined the distillation processes so that they know that it's under the right temperature for the right amount of time, the right heat, all of that kind of stuff. They've um, absolutely, you know, done the process mm -hmm. no end. So, wow. um, sandalwood is a great fixative in perfume so it's often added to perfumes because what it does because once again it's high in the sesquiterpene so it keeps the essential or the other notes like the top and the middle note actually on your skin sandalwood's often if you make up a blend with sandalwood you'll smell the sandalwood long after you you know after all the other notes have actually um mm evaporated from your skin. Right. So it's often in a lot of skin and hair products because it's an amazing oil for skin and hair. What's that sandalwood? Oh yeah, let's have a look. So anyway, that's my top five. So hopefully you found that informative. So officially mm. my number five, even though it's grown here in Australia, it's Indian sandalwood, but not Australian. But I wanted you to know the difference so that if anyone asked you, you would know. Okay, that sounds fantastic. So it's my turn. Yes. And do you know what? doesn't come from Australia. Do you know, and do you know what? I thought, that's it. It's time to pivot. And I can pivot with the best of them. So I'm about to pivot right now in front of this audience. No more Mr. Shutran. Well, really? Well, except at Symposium when I'll be Ed Shutran. But that's another story. But tonight, I want to give you my... Um, what did I decide to call it? My masculine... Moment. Moments. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Manly moments. Manly Sorry. Moment. Let's call it manly moment. That's a bit better. So here's my manly moment. So each week now, I'm going to come up with a manly oil. A manly oil or a manly Or product. if you're a South Sydney supporter. <laughs> Oh, I don't even understand that because I come from Victoria. So there you go. They're all a bunch of... Are you a manly supporter? Comment below. <laughs> yes, I'm a manly supporter. Um, so my manly minute for, for this one is actually talking about a blend. Now, Kim talked about single oils. I'm going to talk about a blend. And strangely enough, it's called Australian Blue. Now, you'd think that would be packed full of Australian oils. But it's not actually, although... It's based on blue cypress. So that's, that's kind of the, the key constituent, I reckon, in it. I love this. And what, what do I normally walk out of the house smelling like? Yeah, he puts and this on. Don't say B.O. Every, <laughs> and every day on his chest. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. And there's a bunch of reasons. So let me just read what's in it, first of all, because it's a pretty cool collection. So it's got blue cypress. It's got ylang-ylang. 
It's got cedarwood, white fir, geranium. Uh, there's a bunch of citruses in there. I think it's got lemon, orange, grapefruit at least. You can tell he's been putting it on his chest. All the hairs are there. That's, <laughs> that was a really long chest hair. Wow, should have framed that one. Uh, it's got jasmine in it. It's got blue tansy. Um, it's, I think it's got ocotea in there. I'm pretty sure it's got ocotea. And it's also got a hint of rose. So there's a bunch of really kind of spiritual... Um, oils in there and I, I love it I find it grounding I find it uplifting um, if you look at the Young Life website they, they talk young about living. it being Young Living website what did I say? Young Life young, did I really? <laughs> oh sorry wow. I used to be involved in an organisation called Young Life so the Young Living website talks about it being stabilising and calming which I, I think it is improving self control which is something that we can all do but also spiritually inspiring. So it's, um, I reckon it's probably the underrated oil blend. Um, I don't know many people who use it, but they should. It's, it's a magical one. And it smells good, fellas. It's a manly smelling blend. It smells good, it makes you feel good. So there and it is. And best of all, you can get it for free this month. And you can, yep, yep. That's the other bonus right there. So there's my manly minute. Yep. So hopefully you found that informative. My top five were um, tea tree. I can't remember what order I did them in. <laughs> so, <laughs> tea tree, kunzia, blue cypress, lemon myrtle, and sacred sandalwood. And Jeremy's was the Australian blue blend. Awesome. So if you want my lemon myrtle fudge recipe, go to my blog and check it out. Hotoilymama.com.au. Hot yep. There's lots of other good stuff on there. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you guys next, next week. week. We're getting so close to symposium, too. Yeah, 8.30 next Monday night. We'll be here. We'll have a new topic for you. Alrighty, All right, see you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.